Good day, I say. It is 9.53 Central Time on a Thursday morning at the Real Ghost Stories Online Studios. And this is going to be our very first full broadcast of Real Ghost Stories Online. We are going to produce an entire show today on Facebook Live. If you are just joining us, welcome. If you are listening to us live, welcome. And we invite you to call in your Real Ghost Story live right now to 662-25-GHOST, 662-25-GHOST with your real ghost story. We would love to hear your story. As this being a actual broadcast of the show, we will uh, put it out there in podcast form as well in the coming weeks. But if you're listening to it live right now, you got in quite early on a broadcast that will be broadcast on the podcast in the coming weeks. So please do share your story and be part of the episode today. To get things started, as this is a normal show, we start with the intro. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. And today's episode, if you're listening to it in podcast form, is being recorded live in front of a Facebook audience. As they used to say in Cheers, except it was this live studio audience. Today, it's on Facebook Live, and our Facebook Live audience is invited to call in on our phone number, 662-25-GHOST, and share their real ghost stories with us in live form today. If you're listening to this podcast after the live broadcast... Uh, in podcast form, you can call our regular number 855-258-2802 and share your real ghost story with us that way. So lots of ways to get your uh, your real ghost story to us here at uh, Real Ghost Stories Online. Of course, you can also share it with us on our website at realghoststoriesonline.com. Uh, and you can also email us your real ghost story if you have it. So uh, 855-853-4802. I think I said the wrong phone number there. I'm so distracted with our new number, I'm saying the wrong number. So anyway, live listeners today, 662-25-GHOST. 662-25-GHOST, you can call it right now if you're list watching this live on Facebook to uh, share your story with us live here on this show. Uh, if you're listening to it on the podcast, 855-853-4802. That's the phone number to call uh, if you're listening to the recorded version of the show to share your ghost story with us that way. We would love to hear from you guys today with some live calls. So I do invite you to call in that 662-25-GHOST phone number. On today's episode, we're going to do some live reading as well. A man finds there is something very evil in his mother-in-law's home. And a dark lady returns to a listener during a rough time in her life. More stories uh, as well to share today. I'm also going to, as we speak, refresh our Facebook feed and we'll answer some questions live uh, through Facebook Live. So if you have any questions uh, or things you'd like to share that way, please do so. Thank you. I got uh, a comment here uh, from uh, Maureen on the hat. Thank you very much. I'm wearing a, I found this in my closet, a zombie land hat and I thought well that would just be totally fitting to wear on camera uh, as uh, I, I don't like I, I need to shave I need to shave my head again because I'm starting to get that George Costanza look going on the you know my hair went away a long time ago look and I, I enjoy having it gone uh, so that's what's going on right now so the hat kind of covers some of that up uh, again, 662-25-GHOST is our live phone number. If you have a ghost story and you'd like to share it with us, please dial in right now live, and we'll take your call live on the air. We would love to hear from you. Of course, you can also put your comments up there on Facebook Live as, uh, as well. Uh, we'll kick off the uh, show today with one of these, uh, these letters. And uh, first of all, Chuck writes into us at Real Ghost Stories Online. First, I must say that I've absolutely enjoyed your podcast since stumbling upon it on Spotify. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us there on Spotify. To give some background on myself, when I was younger, I had the ability to see spirits at times, either uh, face on or peripherally. I grew up in an old home that was originally a stagecoach stop on the way to the New Jersey shore. The tavern 
was then made into a house and through the years was added on to. Uh, that all added to was some spiritual excitement. As a team, my father and I began towing and hauling wrecks, which in their own right can have some nasty things attached to them due to circumstances. When I was 18, as I was pulling into my drive, I was T-boned by a drunk driver traveling just over 100 miles per hour and pushed head on into a telephone pole. Since then, I now can see the color of people's auras and project myself among some other interesting things that I'm adjusting to. So on to why I'm writing. My now mother-in-law was purchasing a home while I was dating her daughter. My first introduction to the house was when I met my wife there to help her paint. We painted well into the early morning and just decided to crash the living room floor instead of driving home. My MIL hadn't moved in yet, so she was at her sister's house sleeping. As we were trying to sleep, the floorboards kept creaking all around us. She and I lay very still during all this, and all the while, I was feeling a presence that we were not wanted. I knew morning was coming soon and felt confident I could fend off whatever was aggressive. At one time, I did roll over and open my eyes, and the dining room before me was so pitch black, I couldn't even see the French doors that led to the outside. You know, the kitchen window had the moon's light shining through it. In a few weeks, we were planning our wedding, and while my wife's room sitting on the bed going over the music to be played, we both heard scratching on the bedpost. I calmly told her to ignore it. I openly said, whatever it is, has no place here or control over us, and in the name of Jesus Christ, to leave immediately. At that point, it stopped. After we were married, we would break our weeks up, staying at my mill house and my parents, we purchased a home eight hours away and were trying to spend time with everyone before we made it to our final move away. On the nights we would spend there at my Mills home, meaning mother-in-law, I would uh, have very vivid nightmares of being hunted by a wolf and eventually being pinned by my shoulders with it in my face. I'd then wake immediately and would struggle to move and could feel the presence above me. As time went on, my wife and I would be shoved while going down staircases in the house. During the day, you could tell whatever it was would stay on the lower section of the home, split-level home. At night, the house belonged to it. On one of our visits, it finally came to a head. It loved to challenge me, and I felt it was because I knew I could sense it and would challenge it back. We had our third child, and we were spending a weekend there at her house. We would all stay in the guest room while there. We put our other two to bed and we're getting ready ourselves. We hadn't brought our youngest up from the porta crib as she was sleeping peacefully and wanted to wait so we were ready ourselves. I was in the bathroom and my wife was in the guest room. Our youngest was in the porta crib in the living room. All of a sudden we heard our youngest let out a frantic cry. My wife and I raced downstairs to literally be faced with both a living room and dining room completely enveloped in pure blackness. The only light you could see was coming from a nightstand plugged next to the porta crib. The light was barely enough to make the crib visible. I reached in, grabbed our baby, and handed her to my wife. I then told her to go to the bedroom while I walked backwards, praying out loud and staring at the darkness. It wasn't even a dark entity. I've seen them before, but this was literally two filled rooms, each room roughly 20 by 20 in size. Normally, when it's dark, you can still see the other side of the room. That size of blackness was so thick I couldn't see more than maybe two to three feet in its depth, and the anger alone emitting from it just made you want to scream. This was not my first time being aggressed upon, but honestly not something that could do that. We got to the room and shut the door, and for all those who are curious, we couldn't just leave the house. The outside door was on the other side of the living room. As crazy as it may sound with things in my past, I carry a small bottle of holy water. I blessed each one of my kids and wife, and we just waited. As we assumed it was over, we laid there talking without us even knowing at the moment how it happened, but the head of the bed felt like it dropped to the floor that we were laying in by two to three inches. I finally coaxed my wife to sleep while I stayed awake the rest of the night and keeping vigil. It would let me know 
It was there by occasionally scratching at the door through the rest of the night. In the morning, I examined the bed to see if, uh, how it could have happened and found no reasonable excuse which I really, really wanted to be able to debunk. With everything that took place, my mother-in-law slept through it all. She never heard my wife scream out or me very loudly announcing the prayers or even the kids waking up startled. She was in the room right next to ours and that was the last night we ever spent in that home. We go back for visits but stay at a hotel now, but I still feel it is there. The house isn't that old, and I truly at first thought it was the original owners, but from what I experienced, either they are very nasty, grumpy, old spirits, or it's something far darker. It has never let me see itself in any form besides projecting itself possibly as a wolf into my dreams. Otherwise, I have no clue. My mother-in-law is now discussing things that bother her about the house when she comes to visit and has admitted at night she stays in the room so it doesn't bother her. Her. She will not discuss it at all on the property, so my wife and I know more has happened than she is letting on. I look forward to your thoughts about this situation and hope you share this. As I get time, I'll send more on cars from wrecks and other happenings I've experienced. Keep up the great work and best wishes. Thank you for that story. We do greatly appreciate you writing that in. Thoughts on that? Everybody on Facebook Live, love to hear your thoughts. Or you can even call in your thoughts at 662-25-GHOST right now. If you are watching us live on Facebook, please do feel free to call in. Somebody, please join us on the phones and share your ghost stories or share your thoughts on the stories that we're sharing right now. We'll answer your call here live on Facebook Live. Uh, some of the, uh, the comments I'll also uh, go through. Uh, very interesting uh, story. As far as the darkness goes, that is that is bizarre to have the entire room almost completely enveloped in that darkness. You know what what exactly is that that's going on there? Of course, you know we've heard the stories of the shadow people where you can't see anything through them. It's just uh, it's just there. It's something completely blocking your vision and you have no idea exactly what is being uh, or who or what it is there uh, but to cover a whole room that sounds like something with a lot more power than just your average shadow person I really don't think I would go with the idea that it's uh, uh, the former owners of the house you know, it, just, it sounds like there's something much darker. There's something taunting, something that's really getting joy out of causing you a lot of pain and anguish. And if it's appearing to you in dreams, if it's able to take up that much dark space, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think you have some sort of maybe low-level demonic entity that was in that house or is in that house. Let me know what you guys think. Please call in 662-25-GHOST. Love to take a live call here on our first live broadcast. That's one of the reasons we're doing a live broadcast is so we can actually take your live ghost story. So if you have a ghost story or anything of that nature, maybe a question you'd like to ask or share, please do call us live right now, right this second, 662-25-GHOST. And I'll take your call live right here on the Air. I uh, got a couple uh, comments here I want to uh, to go to. I got to refresh this. Sarah says, have you guys ever been in uh, Altoon, Illinois area? It's very haunted. Has been one on, or has been on many of the ghost shows. I have not been to that area yet, but uh, I guess another one to add to the, uh, the list of hauntings. It'll be interesting, Sarah, if you can tell us a little bit more about what makes that area haunted. What are some of the, uh, the haunted things there. In fact, Sarah, if you'd like to call in, we'd love to hear from you about the area. Maybe you can share uh, some of the knowledge that you have on the hauntings there. Our number today on this live Facebook special, also being rebroadcast as a podcast, is 662-25-GHOST. Please call in and, uh, and share those stories with us or uh, enlighten us. James writes in, I was sleeping in the back parlor of a haunted house when a woman told me good night. I don't think anything of it until the next day. The woman of the house wasn't up and the daughter didn't get home from work until close to dawn. I would have slept if I'd known, or I wouldn't have slept if I'd known that. Love your podcast. Thank you, James. That sounds like it was a rather creepy 
experience. You know, speaking of you know sleeping, it kind of brings me back to that last story. It's interesting how they were talking about uh, the mother-in-law couldn't hear the screams, couldn't hear the commotion, couldn't hear all that was going on. Again, it, it gets leads me back to the whole thought process of there's something there that was really a very strong entity able to actually absorb the sound or suck the sound out of what was uh, occurring in that room at that very time. There's something with some power there. And that's that, I think, is one of the scariest things that happens when you have paranormal things going on, exactly not knowing what sort of power they have. Sometimes you assume maybe this is the old owner. You gotta hope for the best. But that unfortunately, not always the case as far as what is going on. 662-25-GHOST is our phone number. 662-25-GHOST to call in and share your ghost story with us today on our live podcast. That's the phone number to call if you are watching us live on Facebook right now. So feel free to call in. We'd love to hear your stories or your questions and be the first caller to our uh, our live uh, our live actual first broadcast that we're going to be putting out there as a podcast here at Real Ghost Stories Online. I know we're doing this one in the daytime. We will do one uh, very soon in uh, prime time hours and Jenny will join me on that. I really wanted to do one of these episodes in full, not just testing out the equipment. We did that the other day. I wanted to actually do a full run through of a broadcast uh, outside of prime time. So if there are any more kinks to work out, we can certainly do that, but still for the most part, give you a full show live. Like I said, that will go out as a podcast uh, very soon. Uh, Carnell is writing in on Facebook, uh, just what I needed, early morning spooky stories. Nothing like waking up to ghost stories, huh? That's, uh, that's the way to do it. Let's go to our, uh, our next letter. And if, like I said, if you have a ghost story you'd like to share uh, live here on the show this morning, please call in 662-25-GHOST is the number to do just that. Our next story today comes into us from Karen. Karen says, hi, Tony and Jenny. It's Karen again. I wrote some time back about weird things that had happened at my old apartment where I heard my name being called out and my roommate saw someone going into my room the same morning we had another apartment showing. Anyway, I now live in my new apartment, a house built in the late 1800s, but have yet to experience anything. I'm not sure if I'm losing my empathic abilities or this place simply has nothing going on. Although a quick side note, I went to an open house last weekend because I'm planning on buying a house. This house was built in 1888 and has had at least two people live there for 50 plus years and have died while still living there. I expected to have at least some sort of feeling as I usually do, but you guessed it, nothing. Could it really be that I'm losing it or that I've just been so stressed with work and school that I've not become attuned to otherworldly feelings? So because I haven't had any personal experiences, I'll tell you about one that my dad experienced in Mexico before moving to the U.S. My dad has done and continues to be a hard skeptic. So this story is something I heard from my aunt because my dad will refuse to admit or he'll simply dismiss it. Anyway, on with the story. My dad's brother had left for the U.S. and asked my dad to spend the night with his wife's, at his wife's house so that she wouldn't be alone in such a big house. And because both my dad and my aunt were heading to the U.S. the next day, my dad accepted and headed there after his soccer game. My aunt told him that he could stay in the master bedroom because she didn't like to be there on her own and that she'd stay in the guest room. My dad brushed it off as my aunt being superstitious and decided to stay in the master bedroom. Sometimes at night, my dad said he had seen a woman outside from the bedroom window. He then saw her inside his bedroom. My dad freaked out, ran to the living room and turned on the TV to distract himself as he was in the living room. He looked up to see the same woman in the doorway blocking his escape. My dad was terrified, but he had no choice other than to stay in the living room. The next morning, my aunt asked why he was in the living room, to which he explained that what had happened. My aunt told him that the woman was the reason why she hated that room and she thought it had something to do with the mattress. She further told him that her sister had seen the same woman in the mirror when she was staying in that room. 
Later that day, my dad went into this car and saw the same woman in the rearview mirror. My dad vowed to never step foot in that house again. Flash forward some time, my aunt and dad had left Mexico to join my uncle and were now living in the U.S. My aunt's siblings decided to get rid of the mattress but found cash inside of it. Fearing a curse or perpetual haunting from the woman, they decided to burn it. Nothing ever happened since. I'm not sure from whom or why they had the mattress in the first place, but that seemed to be the culprit of everything happening in the house. I'm sorry this was super long and hope to hear it on the show. You guys are doing a great job and wish you many, many more years to come, Karen. Karen, thank you for sharing that story. I had the bunk bed bell ready to go with the references to mattresses. I was waiting to say, to hear, oh, and it happened to be the mattress was on a bunk bed so I could ring the bell. But uh, unfortunately, I, I don't think it was a, that was the case. It's interesting. I'd like to hear more about why you feel or why they felt um, the mattress was to blame or what, uh, what is the, the story behind that? What's the thought process uh, there? That's, uh, it'd be, it would just be interesting to get a little more uh, insight uh, into that. Uh, somebody else has said, I was just completely going to say bunk bed. I know, I know. Uh, they're saying that on our Facebook live feed. But uh, sometimes, I, know, I mean, it, it just it really, I think it depends on the individual. Sometimes I think, you know, if you are empathic, you have the ability to, to say, it's this object here that I think is causing these things. For example, the other day, uh, we talked about this on the show. Uh, me and Jenny were at a, uh, an antique store, just walking around. And all of a sudden, there was just the very distinct smell of pipe tobacco. That, that smoke, and if you've ever been around a pipe smoker, you know what that smell is. And uh, it just, it hit me, I'm like, my God, I have not smelled that since I was uh, at my, uh, my mom's father's place uh, years ago when I was a kid. He was an avid pipe smoker. And it was just like, it just took you right back. And it was so strong and odd, and I, my initial thought was, well, it must be this large rug here in this antique booth, or some object in that booth. And uh, welcome caller, hang on just one second for me, I just want to finish up this thought. Um, and uh, it, it turned out, she said right away that this, uh, this smell must be coming from this, this stool that was in the booth. She knew exactly where it was coming from. We walked back that direction, smell was completely gone. So it told me this was not something that was necessarily emanating as a real smell, but it was something rather paranormal going on, very creepy. All right, we got our first caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Can you hear me, caller? Can you hear me? Well, I thought we had a caller on the line. I'm wondering if they can uh, they can hear me or not. If you are calling in right now, and uh, you're also on the chat, please uh, please let me know. I want to make sure that everything is is set up correctly for you to hear us today. I did uh, check this right before we did the uh, the first broadcast. Let me just do one other thing and see if this changes anything. Can you hear me, caller? Are you there? Can you hear me? I don't think they are there, so I'm going to end that call. 665-25-GHOST is our phone number to call if you'd like to share your real ghost story with us, or if someone would like to at least, uh, maybe we can work out the kink on that if there is a kink on it. Speakers are working. Uh, let's see this again. Hi, can you hear me? Here we go. Li Listen to us on your phone, not through the feed. Is anyone there? Well, there's clearly someone there, but they're not speaking. So if you'd like to join us, please call, and uh, I think we'll just not answer that number next time it comes up. Uh, Sarah uh, Dillon says, there's a church in Elton. This is talking more about the uh, uh, the uh, haunted church or the area in Eltoon. 
uh, that's said to be haunted by Philip Mercer, who was a former pastor. He hung himself, I believe, from a window. Uh, there's at least three ghosts in the Mineral Springs Hotel, one of them known as the Drunken Ghost. The uh, Eltoon Cemetery is known to be haunted. I'll write in more places around Illinois. We'll try this one more time and see if this is working. Hi, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, you can hear me. <laughs> yes, I can. I turned off the feed on Facebook. Yeah, that was the thing. I, I'm, I apologize. I should have uh, been more specific on that. When you call in, and I'm just going to say this for everybody, when you call into the show, make sure you are listening to us on your phone, not through the feed, because there's going to be a delay there. It's the whole old talk radio thing where, stop listening to us on the radio, but, you know, so that's, <laughs> that's all that is. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I am James Stevens. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, you said James? Yes, sir. All right, James, what sort of story do you got for us today or question? Well, that was, I, I saw the story about the, uh, being told good night by the boys. Okay. Yeah, I, she told me to know it's very pretty sounding, so I said good night back, and that was it. Oh, you're the one I who... Find out. You're the one who wrote it on Facebook earlier. Yes, I was there five minutes ago. So take us back a little bit. You were give give us the setting of of why you were there, what was going on, and, and how this all built up. I guess just outside, tuned into the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an old plantation house. Okay. Had a reputation for being haunted. The daughter said a, a little man used to sit on the foot of her bed while she went to sleep. Oh, God. This was the first and only experience I had there. Very sweet voice. I said good night back. Found out the next day there was no one there to tell me good night. It was female. <laughs> it almost sounds, I mean, did you, are, are, do you feel like you're anyone who has empathic senses or you're just a normal person like myself that doesn't really have any of that, but sometimes you'll experience something? Like, like, did you yeah, get, uh, did you get any vibes or feelings of, of who that, that might be? Did you feel good did, uh, about it? Did no. you feel bad about it? Or just kind of like, oh, you thought it was a human? Yeah, it was a very sweet, caring, good night. Sure. Yeah, never felt freaked out in the house. I spent many a night there. That was the only experience I had there. Do you have other experiences in other locations? Uh, right outside Coffeyville, Mississippi, where I lived for about 10 years. Uh-huh. I was walking through the front of the house, looked outside the window, and there was an older gentleman staring back in, mm -hmm. looked away, looked right back, and he's gone. And he was just not there at all? Yeah, middle of the day. What, what did he look like to you? Did he, did he look like a... The older gentleman had like a light colored shirt on, mm -hmm. brown pants, thick white belt. Looked like he might have been from the, the 70s or 80s kind of dress. Yeah. Yeah. Just as the, the window was, he had to be about eight foot tall looking. And I saw from his waist up, that was a good five foot up off the ground. Yeah. So it's probably startling, first of all, to see somebody through the window at that height, because you know, yeah. wait a second, nobody should be at that height right there. Did he, did he look... Just like a solid, normal human being, or was there any sort of sense of like it, be, it being an apparition of some sort? Oh, he, uh, he was see through. Okay. Yeah, I looked out and, and I asked the, my best friend's mom. I called her mama. I said, Mama, did anyone die in this house? Mm -hmm. She was like, No, why? So I told her. Mm -hmm. She said, I've never seen her before. I hadn't seen her. And he said, Well, after they passed away, the house is apparently haunted by. Her and her husband now. But at the time, we didn't know anything was going on. Mm -hmm. just, he didn't look menacing. I didn't think he even saw me. I think it was just like a residual or something just staring in, mm -hmm. and he was gone. It makes you wonder with something like that, too, if it's even like a time slip of some sort, and for whatever reason, at some point in time, there was some sort of platform or some reason why he could be at that height and why it didn't make sense as far as where, in reality, a human could be standing. And if that is, you know, some sort of time slip there, or, or like you said, a residual haunting. Obviously, we'll never know the answer to it, but... Yeah, uh, yeah that part of the house was added on to the oh, original house. Okay, 
So there may be something it, to that there. It could have been standing in a lot yard looking at something else and just happened to be there. Sure. Sure. Very interesting how that stuff works. Whether it be a yes. time slip or a residual, it's obviously it ends up leading to more questions than answers. But uh, what an experience uh, that that must have been. Is, is this a, cool. is this a story? Do you go on to tell anybody else about it, or do you kind of keep these these sort of things quiet? Uh, oh, no. I've got I'm best friend of a family who have a lot of. A, Want to go experiences over That's the cool. years, so they're very open to it. That's cool that you're able to be able to, to open up and share and, and not be, you know, accosted yeah. for, for those experiences. Well, hey, man, thank you for the call and thank you for sharing those experiences with us. And uh, congratulations on being our first uh, live caller on our uh, our live podcast, our first live podcast. Yes, sir. I listen to your podcast when I work graveyard shifts, so I can't oh. listen to too many ghost stories because <laughs> I will spook myself. <laughs> Oh, come on. We got folks that listen to us inside of uh, funeral homes and cemeteries that work the graveyard shift. I couldn't do it the funeral home. Oh, God, I know. I couldn't either. I could not listen to myself if I was working there. That would be too freaky. But thank you. I do love your podcast. I just got to be careful when I listen to it. All right. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Have a great day, sir. You too. Bye bye. All right, there we go, our first live call here on our live podcast. 662-25-GHOST is a phone number that he called into, and you can too. And uh, we will get your call here live on the air as we uh, do our first uh, live uh, version of the show. Uh, kind of a, It is still kind of a test run, but this is actually going to be put out as a regular podcast. So if you're listening to us in podcast form, uh, do not dial into that number. But if you're watching us live on Facebook right now on the 5th of May, uh, around uh, 1025 Central Time right now, please do call in uh, as we do this whole thing live and take your calls live and share your stories. I want to check out some of the comments here that have been coming into us live. Uh, Michaela says, so my hubby and I are going to Colorado in a few weeks for a weekend, the Denver area, maybe a bit in uh, Colorado Springs. Does anyone have any suggestions on where to take my handsome skeptics? So anyone has any suggestions in the Colorado area of haunted things, feel free to join in in that conversation on Facebook Live right now or call into the show, share your story, share your uh, knowledge even just of areas uh, around there that may have something paranormal with it 662-25 ghost is that phone number i wish i wish facebook live and maybe in the future it will be an added thing where we could actually put like a number on the screen maybe i should just do this this is my laptop here maybe i should just get a piece of tape and put it there very crudely like just like how they used to do where you on, on you know old old television before visual graphics on screen could be put up it was literally let's take a, a shot of this piece of paper but hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, some people say Cripple Creek, Colorado. That sounds interesting. I'd say if you have the time, it's uh, it's a little bit out of the way from Denver. I'd say it's been a while since I've been there, but I think an hour and a half, maybe two hours out. You can get up to uh, Estes Park and uh, lots of history there. Of course, the Stanley Hotel up that way. Beautiful drive. If you're scared of mountain driving, probably not the drive for you, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, lots of history up there and uh, very, uh, very creepy. There's, if you like wineries, there's a lot of wineries along the, uh, the way up there, too. So that could be uh, a possibility. Loving this version of the show, says uh, Terrence in the UK, 425 p.m. there. Terrence, thank you. Uh, 45 to 60 minutes uh, from the Springs, James says, okay, about... Uh, where, uh, in reference to a place to go and uh, check out. Andrea writes in, uh, shout out uh, from Hanford, California. Must be uh, a little bit early. What are you at in California now, time wise? It would be 827 there, I believe. All right. Uh, 855, I'm sorry, that's our normal number. 662 25 Ghost is our number here today uh, to share your real ghost story with us as we do this on uh, on Facebook Live. I think Michaela might have found something. She's uh, getting uh, excited about Cripple Creek. So that, that it just sounds creepy. What is Cripple Creek, if someone wants to 
to, to enlighten us on that. I'd love to, uh, to hear more. Dorothy writes into us at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi there. Let me start by saying how much I love your show. And after listening to so many stories, I felt the need to share some of my spooky encounters. Now, as a kid, I had small but intense experiences. I remember my house was old and it was an open concept and had high ceilings. Sounds bounced everywhere. It shifted a lot. I knew every sound and what it sounded like in a storm in winter and spring. And when it cracked and settled, I knew when someone was walking. And after some time, I knew who was walking around the house. When I was seven, I remember waking up quite abruptly and I was facing the wall. I felt like someone was watching me on the other side of my bed. And then I heard a small whispering voice repeatedly saying, Mom, Mom, Mom like a child was trying to wake her mother. I couldn't think, I could only feel my heart getting faster and faster. I still remember how frightened I was. When I was 12, I remember several times of hearing footsteps in the hallway. It sounded like someone's feet shuffling on the carpet going back and forth between my bedroom door and my parents' bedroom door. It never entered the room, it just paced back and forth. Since those experiences as a kid, I've been more uh, accepting of the paranormal and open-minded. I don't make a point to communicate. I just feel spirits around and I acknowledge them and go about my day. When I was 20, I began to encounter who I call the dark lady. The dark lady started in my parents' new home. My parents had moved into a new subdivision that was just built now about six years ago. There was no history of the house, so I found it weird and Yet no surprise that I woke up abruptly in the middle of the night to the feeling of someone staring at me. I could feel that it was very tall, a very tall woman staring at me almost disapprovingly, and she was very stern. I couldn't figure out why, then I noticed that I could feel her follow me down the hall to my bedroom and into my room and stand in the corner and stare. I hate being stared at by people who are alive and got more freaked out when the other side started doing it. I told her to go and that she wasn't welcome, and I used the white light to block the door like a spiritual lock, and I filled myself with positive white light to protect myself. But this was not goodbye. I just moved to British Columbia, Canada, and I was going through a rough time, fitting in and finding my bliss, as people might say, and I could feel her again. I woke up to her dark, towering energy hovering over me, staring at me from across the room, and I thought to myself, I must be crazy feeling this way. There's no way that there is a strange presence watching me. I'm fine. I went to the kitchen to get some water and I still felt nervous to be wandering my house. I stood at the, the sink and thought, she's not here and she doesn't exist. Sure enough, like something out of a horror film, I could feel like something jump uh, behind me and hit the floor so hard that it vibrated. But just in that one spot behind me, it did not ring through the whole floor like it should have. I ran back to my room, grabbed my sage, and said a very strong prayer. I repeated and concentrated on my words. Only positive energy is allowed here, positive feelings, positive spirits. These words sort of just came out and I use them almost every night. Something I noticed about the dark lady, she only came around when I was quite depressed, so I wonder if those things were connected or coincidence. I haven't felt the dark lady since and I make a point to not only cleanse the room but I pray to angels to protect me and it feels amazing. I actually just recently started seeing very thick gold streaks of light and I actually had a friend see it too when they were in my room. I like to think it's the angels I prayed for. Thank you so much for reading my story whether you share it or not. Love your show. Keep up the awesome work dots. Thank you for writing in and sharing that story. If anyone has any comments on that or would like to share some thoughts, 662-25-GHOST is our phone number. You can also share your real ghost story with me live right now if you call that phone number. It's uh, interesting uh, as far as your story goes, what, uh, what comes to mind um, about uh, depression and uh, you know, surrounding yourself in light and in having these these dark things seem to be attracted to uh, individuals when they're they're not in a good place um, is the the method at which we try to 
get rid of the spirits, if you will, or the, the entities or the ghosts, if that's going on when we're in those, those places. Sometimes I think we jump to the, almost the quick fix of let's, uh, let's sage the place, let's salt the place, let's, let's do the quick thing that's gonna try and make it go away, when really the best thing that can possibly be done when things like this are happening is to really elevate yourself uh, as best you can out of that place. And that may sometimes be uh, with, with therapy, with uh, you know, sometimes medications uh, that can help you uh, elevate your body and your mind to a much better place. And it seems most of the time when people are able to get out of those dark, dark grips and holds of depression, uh, that these other things that sometimes come along and attach with it are able to go away. And by no means am I, you know, saying that, you know, this was just, you know, in your mind. Um, you know, so there's several times where that is the case. And, and it is, you know, a, a byproduct of, of the state that we are in mentally. But I do believe with some of the stories that we've had on here that uh, in addition to what may be going on physically and mentally uh, with, with individuals, that, that these things are certainly attracted to it and can also uh, join in the dark party, if you will that um, a lot of us struggle with uh, when going through those times and places. Um, but always the best thing to do, and it takes time. It's not a quick, let's snap our fingers, let's do this ritual, and it will all go away. It's a long-term fix, but it, uh, it takes time to get there and to get that done. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that. 662-25-GHOST, 662-25-GHOST is our phone number. Uh, somebody says, uh, Cripple Creek is mainly casinos now. Well, that can be scary in its own way. Uh, it used to be an old mining town. Well, that would be interesting. There's, uh, where was it in Colorado? Gosh, Jenny knows the answer to this because we've talked about it on the show. Uh, oh, oh, St. Elmo. That's a bit of a ways away from Denver. That's going to be way out of your way if you were asking about where to go. But if you ever do get there, that also an old mining town up in the mountains. Now, that's a scary drive to get to. Uh, if you like mountain driving, you'll love it. If you are like me and you'll have white knuckles on the wheel the whole time, uh, there you go. That's another uh, drive for you or one you may want to avoid. But once you get up there, neat little town and chipmunks galore. I've never seen so many chipmunks in my life. Uh, and they're not afraid of people. They literally will crawl on you. Uh, we have some video of that. Maybe I can show it sometime. Uh, the girls, uh, you know, this having chipmunks crawl over their boots and their legs and uh they loved it it was a really really neat experience but i mean i swear to god there was probably like 150 200 chipmunks all in this big pile of i think probably a building that had collapsed at some point up there but uh creepy jen thought we she uh as we were driving out she saw a face up in the uh the window of the, the, what was i believe an old hotel there now just an abandoned building it turns out somebody put a mannequin head up there and that freaked the hell out of us. It was literally one of those moments where she was actually driving on the way back down and just slam on the brake and she looks out the window. It's like, oh, what are, you, what are you sitting like? I took a double take too and I went, oh, just a mannequin head. And then she felt kind of embarrassed, but had no reason to be. I mean, we all, I think, you know, we're thinking the same thing because that town has a lot of stories of, uh, of hauntings there. Yeah, Michaela says, uh, that sounds like the uh, the perfect place for me. So I think you, you probably enjoyed that there. Again, this is our live broadcast. So if you're watching us on Facebook, maybe you've just joined us, please call in 662-25-GHOST, and you can share your ghost story with us live uh, here on the show. We would uh, we'd greatly appreciate you contributing and, uh, and sharing a story, or even if you have a question, something you'd like to talk about. Uh, regarding the show or a comment on something you've heard on any of our broadcasts, uh, please do call in. 662-25-GHOST will answer your call live. Just make sure you're listening on your phone, not through the feed, because there is a slight delay uh, on, the, uh, on the feed. So 662-25-GHOST to, uh, to join in and, uh, and have a conversation with us here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to another letter that was sent in to us. Elaine writes in, hi, Tony and Jenny. I sent in a story regarding our haunted vacation home in South Lake Tahoe, California. I promised most more stories, so here it goes. 
After driving four hours from the San Francisco Bay Area, I arrived at our vacation home around noontime. After bringing my luggage into the house, I went into the bathroom to wash my hands. Turning to leave the bathroom, what I saw gave me a fright. Standing in the doorway of my mom's bedroom was the image of a man, half of a man. He was slowly taking shape and substance from the ground up. I really don't know where I got the courage, but I screamed at him to never materialize in front of me again. I told him I was leaving to go grocery shopping and he had better be gone by the time I get back. When I did get back, he was gone. All evening long, I was on alert and felt like I was being watched. Around 11 p.m., I went to bed. As I was trying to get comfortable, I suddenly heard the most beautiful music. It was an instrumental song which made me feel it was from the 1940s. I got up and checked everywhere to see where that music was coming from. None of the bedrooms or kitchen radios were on. The TV was turned off. Thought maybe the neighbors were having a party. So I stepped outside only to find utter silence. As soon as I stepped back into the house, I could hear the song again. I finally went back to sleep, lulled by the music. I never once thought the music was paranormal. That's how normal it sounded. Being very busy with work and newly married, I didn't have the time to plan a Tahoe getaway. Luckily, my mom went to Tahoe often. Two years went by and I finally planned a trip to Tahoe. Reaching the house, everything looked exactly the same. As I opened the front door, I said, I'm back. I told the spirit that I had done some research on previous owners of the house and thought I knew who he was. I said, if you are John Smith, not his real name, do something to let me know if I'm correct. That night I woke around midnight to the same beautiful song I heard years earlier. I smiled to myself, now understanding the music was paranormal, and went back to sleep. I want to make note of something strange about that song. No matter how hard I try, I can't remember it. It's like it was wiped out of my memory. However, the last time I heard it at the Tahoe house, I recognized it immediately and knew it was the same song. A few years later, my husband and I went to stay at the house for a long weekend, and during our stay, there was very little ghostly interaction. On our third day, I came down with food poisoning. It was such a bad case, and I really couldn't go anywhere. Making matters worse, it was extremely hot in Tahoe, and we had no air conditioning. All we could do was open the windows that night. Not wanting to disturb my husband's sleep, I chose to sleep in a different bedroom. As I was lying in bed, still not feeling great and trying to sleep, the coolest breeze I've ever felt entered my room. Came right up to the side of the bed, became engulfed in it. It felt so good, and I knew it was John. I told him not to worry and thanks for checking on me. I told him his presence felt wonderful. I don't know how long he stayed with me, but I finally fell asleep, still surrounded in cool air. I've been enjoying all the perks of being an EPP, and I strongly suggest those who enjoy these podcasts to join. It's money well spent. Plus, I love listening to everyone's true ghost stories. Keep up the good work, you two. Elaine. Elaine, thank you for being an EPP, and thank you for sharing those stories with us. We greatly appreciate that. And yes, EPP is exactly what keep this, this thing alive. Without our EPPs, we could not be doing all the stuff that we do. <coughs> Excuse me. And expanding this into uh, some more areas like this. Our live... Uh, Facebook cast uh, where we can just sit down here, do a live show, interact one-on-one -on -one with the comment stream, and also take your live calls. Sounds like that was a ghost that uh, you'd actually want to have. You know, that would be one too, where if you are the uh, uh, the proprietor of a, of a house that has a ghost like that and it's open for people to come and stay and rent it, um, uh, you'd almost be hard pressed not to uh, to publicize that without some folks almost seek out ghostly experiences, but don't want to necessarily be scared. Like, hey, if you want a good ghost experience, come to this house. Here's what, here's the features and what other others have said about our ghost, not just haunted house or you know, you know however you want to advertise your hotel being haunted. Um, actually having a fairly positive experience. Although then it begs to, to make you wonder, could that then also attract some sort of negative entity going, oh, you think you're getting this for a ghost today? <laughs> Not what you planned for, here I am. You know, I could see something like that, either an ass soul doing that, or uh, a legitimately negative entity. But hey, I always, try, I always tend to go to the worst possible place with everything now, don't I? 
if we uh, can get you to call in and share your story, we would love to hear it live here today. 662-25-GHOST is the phone number to call in, not the, uh, the 855 number today. If you're watching us live on Facebook, that will go right to the voicemail system. 662-25-GHOST. When you dial that, I will answer it right here, right now, as we do this podcast. And we can hear your story or answer any questions you may have. We would love, or I would love to hear from you uh, as we, uh, we continue on with our broadcast here today on Facebook Live. And then this will eventually, like I said, be distributed as a podcast uh, in, uh, in the coming weeks. Let's take a check and see what, um, what folks are saying on our Facebook feed. Ian says, yeah, the EPP episodes are legit. Thank you, Ian. Let's go to our caller in uh, the 818 area code. Let's see how good I'm at guessing area codes. Is that California? Yeah, it's Andrew. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. Uh, what sort of story or question do you have for us today? Well, I had actually was a quick question and a story. Okay. Uh, the, quick quest, the quick question is, has um, any spirit or ghost in any of the stories that you've heard ever come out and said there's a um, there's a God, there's a heaven, or there's a hell? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, I, that's an interesting question. I mean, because obviously this all kind of, you know, coincides together and it makes you, you know, wonder sometimes about, you know, wh where are these ghosts, you know, if, if you believe in a heaven or a hell, are they... Are they in between? Are they aware they're even dead? Or is that part of why they're a ghost? Because they haven't gotten to up or down yet. But uh, all I've heard, you know, in relation to that is, is kind of the crossing over stories where someone on this side helps them go to the light, if you will. And it seems the light is always a fairly positive thing. There's very, uh, never actually have I heard someone saying, okay, go to the heat, go to that dark heat that you're feeling and, uh, and move into it. So does that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. It's almost like um, they're in between and so they can't answer that necessarily. Yeah, I mean, that's almost what I, I'm, I'm thinking. If, uh, you know, if, if that's the belief system of heaven and hell, uh, that I think sometimes they're unaware exactly what is going on, and I think they may be just as confused, or they may be sitting there going, okay, I'm dead. Why am I not in heaven or hell? What, what is this? What's going on? Um, and for whatever reason, sometimes they need us on our side to help them make the realization for whatever reason. And that's, that's a, a whole other conversation to be had. What, Absolutely. What, Absolutely. what sort of story do you have for us today, Andrew? All right, it's a, it's a quick story of an experience I had about a year and a half ago um, in Santa Monica, okay. California. And um, it, was, it was during, it was around September, I was out with my son and we were in Santa Monica and we decided to go and see a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a place called Third Street Promenade, which has a movie theater on it. And um, we went into the movie theater, it was about the afternoon. We grabbed all our drinks and popcorn and we were, we were early for the movie. So this was the movie theater where you would have to go down an escalator to, to go into the, this movie theater. So we got all our food, we came down the escalator, and when we turned left, we saw the two doors open to this movie theater. And, you know, we were early, so I looked and I saw this woman sitting, you know, inside the movie theater. So I said, oh, this is great, we can go in. I said to my son, and he's like, okay, it means 11. So we walk into the movie theater, and we turn right, and as we turn right, that is where the screen is. And there's a lady cleaning the floor. She's wiping, swiping the floor with her broom and cleaning equipment. And she said, oh, we're not open yet. So I, I turn around to see, you know, where this woman was, and she's no longer there. So I, I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. And, you know, it's one of those moments where you're not thinking, oh, right, I just saw something. Mm -hmm. So we turn around, and we wait outside, and... And then about, you know, 10 minutes later, everyone goes in and we watch the movie and whatnot. So I'm just sitting there, you know, throughout the movie, kind of sitting puzzled over, you know, the experience. And then afterwards, when the movie finished, we went back up the escalator. And while my son was looking at the theatrical displays outside, I went up to the cleaning lady who was in her room. She was just, the door was open. And I just said, excuse me, I said, do you remember me when I came in, uh, into the movie theater earlier? 
And she said yes. And I said, um, I know this is going to sound like a strange question, but was there anyone else in the room at the time? And she said, uh, no, it was just you and your son. And I said, well, was there a lady sitting in the uh, corner, um, an old lady, she had white hair, she was wearing a red jacket. And she just said, oh, you're scaring me now. And I said, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so my, my son was out of earshot, so he didn't hear anything. So I remember walking, you know, out of the movie theater with my son. And I said, when we were walking to that movie theater, and I said, oh, we can go in now. Did you see anyone? And he said, yes. He said, I saw an old lady. And he, he described her to tea. And I said, what did she look like? And he said, well, she had white hair, and she was wearing a red type of shirt or jacket. So that was when I realized that was the first time I've ever seen a, a spirit, you know, and I realized my, both my son and I saw it. So it was interesting. It wasn't just something that was projected to you alone or something that only you picked up on with being sensitive. It was, it was truly something that was very strong, obviously, to be seen by more than one person. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest, I, I think it might even be where... Um, She's almost revealing herself more to her son, mm -hmm. to, sorry, to my son than me, because, you know, I think younger children, they, they can be more susceptible to this than sure. adults. Um, and so, but I was able to pick up on it, and um, obviously the cleaning lady didn't see anything. Yeah, but, um, that's, that's, that's an interesting part, is two people saw it, but the other one didn't. Um, you almost think, like, almost after one person sees it, that everyone is going to see it. But maybe that's not necessarily the case. Maybe it, it can be very much... You know, chosen as far as who you know they want to project themselves to, and it can get that specific. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you, Andrew, for the call. We appreciate you calling in. Take care. Right, take care. You too. Bye bye. Our number six six two twenty five ghost six six two twenty five ghost to call into our live show today. Only use that number if you're watching this live on Facebook right now. If you're listening to this in the podcast form, uh, you're listening to a recorded episode. Obviously, that's what a podcast is. But we are doing this episode completely live with live callers and live feedback on Facebook Live. Uh, and uh, sharing the stories in video form as well. So you can actually watch this episode. We're going to post this video onto YouTube, and uh, it will be on Facebook as well uh, to view. So uh, if you're listening in podcast form, uh, as this is uh, going out to you, uh, you can go back and, and rewatch it if you'd like to. Watch me read and uh, take the calls wearing a Zombieland hat. It makes everything so much better. <laughs> <laughs> so 662-25-GHOST, if you want to get your ghost story in here, we're coming up pretty close to the uh, the end of the episode. A little bit of time left, so last call right now, I will say. If you want to call in and share your story, call in right now so we can get you in. 662-25-GHOST is our live call-in number. Whether you're east of the Rockies, west of the Rockies, in the middle of the Rockies, or on top of the Rockies, or enjoying a beer with Rocky Mountains on it. Doesn't matter, you call 662-25-GHOST. Uh, let's do, I have another story here that was uh, written in. Brian uh, written, wrote this in, it says, my, grand, my great grandparents, uh, Valentine and Stephanie, are buried at Resurrection Cemetery in Justice, Illinois, home of, da 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 Resurrection Mary. That's one of the first ghost stories I think I ever heard as a kid, and I think I saw it on Unsolved Mysteries, and what a creepy story that is. If you're unfamiliar with it, look it up. Lots and lots of stories of this one. Continuing on, I was around nine years old when this story occurred, and I just watched your story on YouTube of this specific ghost. Around 2004 or 2005, I was with my grandpa and brother accompanying my grandma to bury the family's beloved dog, Gigi, with my great-grandmother, in the cemetery. Burying a pet, let alone anything in the cemetery, is highly illegal and prohibited by law. So my grandpa agreed to help my grandma climb the rear entrance fence opposite of the burned handprint fence to dig a shallow grave to let the dog rest with her owner. About 45 minutes passed and as my grandparents had us in their car, grandma was digging the grave while grandpa kept us kids company. Parents had been at their anniversary dinner when a white truck pulls next to us. It's around 10 p.m. and they say they are from the cemetery and ask why we are camped out. And they threaten to alert the police when my grandfather 
pulled out his IDOT badge and, ward, uh, and uh, warded them off with the old engine stalled excuse. Another 25 minutes goes by when a girl in a rose gold dress passes us. We found it odd, but in May we assumed it was a ditched prom date. Maybe five minutes later, the girl returns to ask why we are still parked and for a ride home. My grandpa, a former policeman, assured her with, I don't know, we have car troubles, and refuses to allow her in. Instead, he offers cab money and says he can call her parents to assure she arrives home. The girl denied the offer, saying her date left her at the dance and would more than likely pick her up. The girl then continued walking, and that was the last we saw. Now 20, I know the story of Mary very well, and I've asked my grandpa, nearly 80, about it. He says he remembers well and says he still can't shake whether it was a well-executed prank or a paranormal encounter. Terrifying to think of now. That is very creepy, because that does fit all of the, the pieces of the story that people know of Resurrection Mary. Now, if it could be a prank, uh, I suppose if I were a high school student enjoying the paranormal and had a lot of free time on my hands and uh, could fit the profile of Mary, I probably would do it because that's just the type of high schooler I was. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed screwing with people. Um, but uh, was that someone messing with someone or was that, uh, was that something else? I kind of get the feeling it might have been the real thing, don't you? Just by the way it was all kind of handled, very passive, very, you know, very much to the T of the other Resurrection Mary stories that are out there. I'm going to go with that being the real deal. Thank you for writing that one in. That's really really creepy. I don't know, that, that story, that whole concept has always really freaked me out. Last call here for, uh, for your stories. If you want to call in and get on the air today on the broadcast, please do so right away so we can fit you in before we wrap this up. 662-25-GHOST is that phone number. 662-25-GHOST. I'd love to, uh, to get you in here if that's what you're wanting to do and have your story told and we can uh, talk a little bit about it live here on the show, 662-25-GHOST. Of course, you can also remain anonymous. Don't have to say where you are, where you're from, who you are, uh, whatever you like. Um, just uh, would enjoy another caller if you want to uh, join us. Uh, comments here on Facebook. Uh, Stu uh, from the UK says, had a spooky encounter about 13 years ago when I lived in the family house. Me and my brothers and a friend decided to contact the dead. We got a candle. Put it beside the mirror and called, is anyone there? Please come forward. Did this a few times and nothing happened. Until later that night, a friend crashed over and was asleep on the floor. I woke up to the bed shaking. I shouted to the friend, hey, what are you doing? To fall back asleep and to awake hearing my friend saying, Stu, Stu, what are you doing? I said, I'm behind you. My friend jumped out of the bed, switched on the light. He was white as a sheet. I said, what's the matter? He said to me, I woke up and could see a tall, dark figure leaning over me. I thought it was you, but you were asleep behind me. Did we open up a window from what we did? Thanks, Tony. Stu from the UK. I don't know uh, if you open up a window. I mean, if you were to, uh, to, to simply believe that you can open a window by what you asked, I'd say yes, possibly. Anytime you're calling on the dead and you're doing any sort of ritualistic exercise involving uh, you know, things that are involved in rituals, mirrors, candles, Ouija boards, I think you always run that risk and to have something like that happen, yeah, you may have opened something. Let's just hope whenever you ha uh, happen to open can also be closed at the, uh, the same time. Terrence uh, uh, writes in in regards to the story we just talked about on Resurrection Mary. It says, if someone doing a, uh, was doing a prank, it would have to be there a lot of time waiting for people to be in the cemetery at that time. That's true. You really would need to be camped out almost all the time. And I don't know a whole lot of teenagers who have the patience to do such a thing to that level. Again, kind of pointing to, you may have had a real ghost there with the Resurrection Mary story. All right. Uh, again, last call for calls. 662-25-GHOST. 
if you want to share your story live on the air. We'll read this last story, and if we have a call, we'll go to that. If not, we'll wrap up the show for today. Darren says, hello, Tony and Jenny. Recently found your show while looking for creepy stories on YouTube. Hey, you found us. Goal accomplished. I have to say I'm hooked and plan on signing up to become an EPP soon. Well, thank you. And if you're not, guys out there watching are not EPPs yet, please consider becoming one. New episode coming out tomorrow. We'll be taping that later today. Very excited about that episode. I think you're really going to love it. You sign up on our website, ghostpodcast.com. And like I said, that's what funds this thing, keeps it going, allows us to do this for you uh, all the time. I have a very short story, but a scary story to share with you that I've never told anyone else. I was so traumatized by this and felt that no one would believe me if I told them. I'm only sharing this now because I feel that your audience might understand, so here goes. The year that I just turned 18, I'd just broken up with my girlfriend of two years and was very stressed out and depressed. I decided to go camping in the woods, very close to my parents' house for a few days, alone. I've been camping there many times over the years with friends, but never alone, but I didn't think it would be a big deal. I felt that I needed time alone to think about my life and just get some peace and quiet. I was out there alone all weekend. During the day, I'd go hiking, take pictures of nature all around me. At night, I built a small fire and sat up, thinking about my future, just watching the flames burn the wood. After about a few hours, I'd then get into my small tent, go to sleep. It was very relaxing and helped me to focus on what I needed to do with my life. Once I returned home, I took the film by my 35 millimeter camera to be developed. When I got the pictures back, I was shocked and horrified to find pictures of me sleeping every night in my tent along with the other nature pictures that I had taken. The flash was used to take these pictures, so I have no idea how this happened or why I didn't wake up. Just remember this incident has me shaking just thinking about it. To this day, I have never gone camping and I probably never will, but I will always wonder who or what that was that snuck into my tent every night and took pictures of me while I slept. I wonder if this has happened to anyone else. Nothing was taken and every morning everything appeared to be just as I left it the night before. Thank you for sharing my story. Have a, a great night. That is very creepy. And you know, I do recall um, there being a story like this a while back. I. I don't remember the details uh, down to a T, but I do remember that story existing on the show of someone having gotten their photos developed back when we did that. Youngins, if uh, you're not familiar with the concept, I'm sure most people are, we actually had to take the photos somewhere and then they developed them for you and then you got them back in an hour and that was considered quick. Um, and having that same experience where it was, wait a second, these photos are of, of me sleeping. Uh, how did this happen? There was no one else here. What does it mean? Could it have been another human being? Sure. I think that's almost a scarier concept than the ghost. I think I'd almost rather have it be a paranormal ghost that took the pictures rather than thinking that there was a human being that was violating my space in the middle of the night and simply taking pictures and going away. That's just, yeah, very creepy. Thank you for sharing that. I, we have one more story here, actually, I can read, and I'll do the last call again, 662-25-GHOST, to call in if you want to get your story here on the air before we wrap this up. Please do call. We'd love to hear it. Roy writes in, hi, guys. Love your show. I intend on becoming an EPP as soon as the finances improve. Sent you a couple of stories about my experiences, but there's one from my dad. It's quite poignant as the fifth anniversary of his death has just passed. I'm sorry to hear that. I went back to the UK to help nurse him in his final days as my ma'am didn't uh, want to put him in a hospice care and needed the help anyway. I sat with him and we talked about many things during the last couple weeks of his life. One thing that puzzled me was he had no fear of death. He explained that he's seen many things in his 80 odd years and was convinced that when we pass we move to another dimension. He then told me about an experience he had when he was a kid during World War II. He lived in Hull, a city in northern England. He was heavily bombed by the Germans. One day, just before he was due to be evacuated, he happened to be playing soccer in the street when he saw his next-door neighbor, Mrs. Broomfield, walking towards her house with her grocery bags. My dad, been a well-mannered, polite kid, as they were old back then, ran towards her and asked, Hello, Mrs. Broomfield, can I carry your bags for you? He said this was a normal occurrence whenever he saw her. She looked down at him, didn't reply, then walked on. My dad asked her again, and she continued to ignore him. 
He shrugged his shoulders and went back to the game with other kids. A little while later, his mother shouted to him to come home for dinner. When he sat with his mom, he told her what had happened. And his mother looked at him and said, don't be silly, Gerald. Mrs. Broomfield died last night. He told me he was shocked and turned pale as a ghost. His mother asked him again and he stuck by his story. His brother Gordon came in and said he had seen her also as he had followed her along the street earlier that day. I don't know if maybe she knew he was going to be evacuated and wanted to see him one last time, or maybe it was a warning as a couple of days later he went to say hi and the Germans bombed his street and Mrs. Broomfield's house was totally destroyed. But his moms didn't get hit. Just a few broken windows. He told me when he was in the Air Force based in Malta, he experienced other supernatural events, but they were for another day. Unfortunately, he slipped into a coma later that day and passed away two days later. I've always wondered about the other stories, but I guess he'll have to tell me them next time we meet across the dimensions. Thanks, guys. Roy. Thank you, Roy, for sharing that story. It's awesome you were able to get that story from him before uh, the passing. That's... Uh, it leaves a lot of questions as far as what what was the purpose of that that encounter and that meeting I think it may be exactly what you described maybe one last chance to, to see the kids that you cared about in the neighborhood or maybe a warning of some sort as well that was uh, I like that one thank you thank you very much for that all right I think that's uh, going to wrap up our uh, our live episode today let me just check our, uh, our Facebook uh, comments one more time and see if there's anything else we want to uh, to touch on and uh, 662 25 ghost being the phone number if you want to dial in you got like a couple seconds to do so um, all right it's funny because once we get so many comments it gets hard to track what the most recent ones are because Facebook starts adjusting the feed and what goes to the top and what goes to the bottom um, so I'm just trying to read on the uh, the device that we're recording on, the iPhone, uh, if there's anything there. Just lots of thank yous. Thank you, guys. Gina, Julie, uh, D. Paul, uh, Terrence, and everyone else who joined us here uh, on the live broadcast today. It was uh, a lot of fun uh, doing this. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, and I hope we can do uh, more this year. Uh, in the future, we'll do more live call-in shows. We'll do one in prime time here with uh, with Jenny as well. So there you go. We have to uh, to keep this in tune with the podcast. So there you go. The closing theme song for the podcast. Is it available for download? It's nice. It's actually from a stock music library uh, that uh, I, I use for commercials we bought the rights to. So. Uh, unfortunately, no, not available for download. I'm sorry, but there it is. You can enjoy it. So until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thank you for joining us for our very first full live podcast of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you're not an EPP yet, sign up on the website, ghostpodcast.com, and help keep us on the air. Your support is what keeps this thing alive. Without it, we would not exist. Have a good day, everybody.